Hello everybody, welcome to the Gyrocopter Flying Club. Regular viewers will know that I covered a question asked about my thoughts about taking off from this 200 meter gravel strip. If it would be possible, and if so, which aircraft should the viewer buy? The answer came with lots of caveats and ultimately, whilst the sensible decision may have been to leave it, the actual answer wasn't easy to give definitively because of the lack of detailed information in the gyroplane POH. Manufacturers like to market their aircraft as being short takeoff, but as viewers commented upon, some didn't believe that to be the case, and I would agree. Let's start by highlighting one factor in our takeoff thinking process. Rotary wing aircraft can't stall and spin in like fixed wing aircraft, yet airspeed remains a crucial element to our flying because Without it, you can't maintain level flight and your rate of descent will develop to a point that you can't sustain to the ground without major damage to yourself and the aircraft. It follows that if you have enough height, you can trade height for airspeed and recover. But close to the ground, like during takeoff, you don't have that option. Data is presented in the pilot's operating handbook that shows an area of height and airspeed combinations that should be avoided as explained by this UK military test pilot. The area of the aircraft's flight envelope, which the pilot must avoid staying in continuously, if, on the circumstances of him suffering a sudden engine failure, he's going to manage to land the aircraft safely. And it's usually defined by a height and an airspeed combination. If the pilot should have an failure within those areas, the chances of him getting away with a safe landing are pretty remote as this American test pilot was to discover. Typically, for two-seat gyroplanes, 60 miles an hour or 100 kilometers an hour is a usual airspeed that one should obtain before establishing a climb out, as depicted in this graphic that shows takeoff run required, i.e. the distance to one stick, is very much different to take off distance required, i.e. the distance required to clear 50 feet. That airspeed may vary slightly, but you can refine things further and look at the speed gyrocopters unstick, which is almost universally 40 miles an hour airspeed, which is why with winds of 20 knots plus, you see people make films of very short takeoffs, because you really only need to get the aircraft accelerated another 10 miles an hour or so. It looks good, but it puts you in a hole if the wind fades. One of the features of attempting gyrocopter short takeoffs are that pilots usually over pitch, meaning that the aircraft unsticks quite quickly. Why? Because it's got a high angle of attack. But if you respect the HV curve, the takeoff distance is actually worse because of all the drag you created with all that pitch. Of course, the alternative is to just not bother with the height velocity curve and get yourself airborne with no airspeed. But then if the engine quits, you'll likely die. The other problem with over pitching is you can lose some directional control. And just to prove it isn't all about cranked keels, here are some straight keel Magni aircraft experiencing the same issues. So, is a gyrocopter able to perform short takeoffs or not? Well, happily, mathematics gives us a helping hand. Using basic acceleration formula, where we simply need to know the initial speed, i.e. zero, and the time taken to accelerate to a given speed, we can find the distance taken. In this example, I can't see the airspeed indicator, but I do know it's an instructor pilot who is flying with discipline, and so I'm going to assume he's going to adopt 60 miles an hour as his climb out speed. And if that's the case, this takeoff to 50 feet takes around 600 feet. And remember, that's flying solo and trying to get airborne ahead of those trees. This Cavalon, I can see the airspeed indicator, and it takes around 800 feet to achieve 60 miles an hour, flown with a light passenger. It wasn't the most stable takeoff run, and it's quite usual to get a Cavalon nod, as shown by this orange Cavalon, flown solo. This aircraft takes around 600 feet to get to 50 feet. Less confident pilots those who may hold a wheel balance for a long time or are not particularly aggressive with the throttle application will see takeoff distances increase considerably. 
This Cavalon pilot, for example, needs over 1,300 feet to achieve 60 miles an hour. And this is another huge variable that lies waiting to snag you. Unlike a fixed wing aircraft where takeoffs broadly involve the ability to open the throttle, gyroplane pilots have typically been taught a more involved technique. So even if the aircraft POH suggests takeoff is possible in X feet, without experience, it's unlikely you're going to achieve it. Fly safely.